Why, hello everybody. This is Robbie from Southern California. And you know, today I just wanted to do kind of a little quick tip. As you know, our weather is changing and we are raining today. And we're still in September. And what I wanted to show today on the hummingbird feeders is not what you see in front. Those hummingbirds are feeding in feeders that I've designed outside in the rain. But as it starts to rain more and more, you will see that the hummingbirds really do not like to feed in the rain. Of course, they will feed in the rain. They have to. They will feed wherever they can find food. But like, here's a little guy. He found his feeder right here that he can feed that is under the eaves of the house. They prefer, when possible, to not feed in the rain. If you're feeding hummingbirds all year round, like we do here, things start to change. I don't usually change it this early in like right now in September, we're not quite into October yet because, well, we don't usually have the rain right now. Usually we don't have rain until the end of October. But I am gonna start thinking about changing things. Now here I have a feeder on my deck garden hanging out in the rain, there is nothing. It's out to the elements. They will still use it. Now if it's pouring, they're not real happy about it, but they'll still use it. But let's walk over here and you'll see this is really a simple fix. Let's look at this one right here. This is just a, oops, see, see how it's been raining? It's all wet. Okay, this is just simply a hook you can buy and this attaches to my deck, but there's a lot of garden hooks that go straight into the ground. Have to do this quick because it is raining as I do this and my camera is not waterproof. This is just a food dish. We've actually had this thing up for over two years now. This is just something we once got, probably from a party, food was delivered, or not, I shouldn't say delivered, but picked up at the store. And Gary mounted it up on the top, just made a little bracket for it, and that's been hanging there. Now they can feed on this feeder and stay completely dry, because they're underneath. So while they're feeding, and of course, you know, I get the dollar hummingbird feeders and I make a little wire, you know, stand so they can sit and relax. I love these. You can just get this little thin wire, twist it around, make sure that there's no sharp points. And then they can sit here and enjoy themselves and have a nice meal. Well, this is out of the rain and that's what they really, really like. These are in the rain. These, these will have to be moved now because today it started to rain. It just started to rain just recently, like... 20 minutes ago. Now this is a bucket top. And again, Gary just, with a piece of wire, all he did was make a couple holes. I know it's hard to see. And just mounted it on top. Any way you can mount something. Just kind of think about it. And again, this is out of the rain now. So they will go to those first. Let's see if I can show you over here. That feeder I have by my kitchen window and I have multiple ones. They will feed on the feeders that are under the eaves of the house first because of course they're dry. They're smart, they don't wanna feed in the water. Now here's another thing that you should know. When, isn't this something, this bird is like 12 inches from me. I, I absolutely love this. They trust me, I bring something out, they come and try anything. When their hummingbird feeders, their nectar in there gets wet, they won't feed anymore because it gets diluted. They know it's too diluted. They can't just sit, sit and drink water all day or they'll die. So that's the other thing with the hummingbird feeder. Come on guys, make a liar out of me. <laughs> um, no, like I said, it just started to rain. So this would dilute, absolutely this would dilute the food that's inside. So this will not work. They will stop drinking out of it as soon as it gets wet. And this goes for the feeders that you're hanging up. If the water is just pouring in here and it gets inside the flower, whatever you've got there, and the water starts to go inside the feeder, you'll notice some people have said, gee, it was raining, and they've told me they stopped feeding from it. What's wrong? It's not necessarily the rain that made them stop feeding. What stopped them is the food no longer was the right consistency of sugar, and they knew it. And if they continued to drink it, their they would die because they're not getting enough of the sucrose that they absolutely need to survive. I'm telling you, these hummingbirds are just out to make a liar out of me. Look at this. No, like I said, it just started to rain. 
once those things, these feeders I made because they're flat, if they get water in there, they'll stop drinking from it. But that's why you want to cover the feeders, and that's why in the winter when you have rain, especially rain, I've seen feeders out in the snow. The snow, let me step back, will not get into the feeders. So it won't hurt them as much, the snow, but water will. And the breakdown for them, and you know how it works, it's one cup of water to a quarter cup of sugar. Of course, I don't make that because I have to make two cups of sugar every making to eight cups of water. But that's as simple as it is. It's just a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar. I use cane sugar. Let me step back here. I use cane sugar, but if you get regular sugar from the store, the white sugar, a lot of times if it doesn't say cane sugar, it's beet sugar beet or beet sugar, whatever you want to call it. And you know, that is perfectly fine because the main thing you want to do is get sucrose into them. That is the right sugar to use, white sugar, and this will sustain them. See how they're feeding on the one that's covered? This is because I had to step out of the rain. That's what they prefer. Again, yes, they're feeding out of those that I've set up. They're, they're used to it. They like them. It's drizzling right now, but if it was pouring, they will gravitate to the ones that are covered first. They're like people. They don't want to, I don't know. My daughter goes out in the rain, so, and my granddaughter goes, oh, it's raining. They all run outside and walk through the rain. So everybody's different. But they, you know, would appreciate it if you can get it, like, under an eave. So as winter comes and we get into our rainy season, I then start to move a lot of my feeders underneath eaves, especially when we're getting pouring rain, because that is very difficult on them. They have to use more energy to feed when it's raining and cold than it is in the summer. It's just like people. So I try to move a lot and we try to get a lot of them covered. You can make a little tent-like cover. You know, don't cover it completely if they don't know your feeder's there because they won't find it. But just a little shield on the top, anything simple. Of course, if you're dealing with windstorms, then that won't work because we have had those tops fly off before during massive windstorms. But I will say those two have been up there for one to two years. So they did not blow off. He bolted them on this time, I think, because I went out there and wired them up. And then some of them snapped off. So he put an extra piece of plastic on it with uh, two bolts. And now it's bolted on there. But again, if you can, find places to put your hummingbird feeders for the winter. Because a lot of places do have hummingbirds all year round. I mean, they're not all going south for the winter. They'll be staying wherever there's food. Food is the most important thing to hummingbirds. Besides the weather, food. If they've got food, they will survive in the snow. The reason they have to leave a lot of places is because there's no flowers, there's no nectar. They'll find insects, they'll find little things like that, but they still, without the sucrose, they will not survive. So I kind of wanted to do an update on that to show you and give you an idea in case you haven't thought about it because to be honest, obviously, I didn't even think about it because I didn't know it was going to rain today. And all of a sudden, they're talking rain. But that's all there is to it. And like I showed you my window, they will go under the eaves first because it's dry. They don't have to use as much, much energy to try to stay on the feeder or fly around the feeder because they're out of the rain. And then, of course, what do they do? They feed and then they go back and sit in trees. Well, that's because their feathers are structured where the rain will roll off at them. So as far as sitting, they don't mind sitting in the rain because the rain will bead and just roll off. But if they can, they will find a place to feed that's out of the rain. So I just wanted to give you a little idea, a tip, a heads up. Winter's coming in some areas. I know that some people are going in the summer, but Australia in the summer would be perfect, except they don't have hummingbirds, but they've got so many other beautiful birds. They have the most beautiful birds in the world. So if you've got the hummingbirds, start thinking about where you're going to move your feeders, if you've got it out in the elements, and maybe start moving it now. In fact, I would not move the feeder. My suggestion would be set up a second feeder out of the rain, because if you move it, they may not know where you moved it to. But if you set up set up a second feeder then they'll know oh she put up another feeder there and then when you do move the one out of the rain you know in the cold weather windy wet weather they'll already know that there's another one that they can go to so with that isn't this amazing 
Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. This is just amazing. Anyways, with that, I hope I gave you some ideas to get ready. Winter is coming here in the U.S. And let's get those hummingbirds dry as much as we can so they can survive the winter. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow, everybody. Bye-bye.